Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin. This is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. And you guys are so used to it, so I keep on saying the same intro. You guys are going to be saying this in your sleep one day, so I hope that you will be doing that so you know what to do. You know that we have a special, special show for you today because I've got some of the top performers from the CSA T20 Challenge with me today. And we're going to have an open discussion and you're going to see how we're going to be discussing things amongst each other. I want them to actually open up the conversation with each other. Um, I already told all of them, except Michal, uh, I've told everybody else that banter is welcome. This is a show where you guys can get to banter each other and have some live funny chats. I want to hear what you guys have been up to, obviously, in the bio bubble, what, what some of the competitiveness that happened in, amongst the teams. Of course, we know about the FIFA tournaments in the Cobras um, set up, so we, I want to know what, the, what happens amongst the other guys and from the other provinces. But before we get started, you guys know what you have to do. You got to subscribe to this channel. You got to click that notification bell, of course, for all future videos as well. I've made a special button for you guys so you can go ahead and do so too. And for the comment section, because this gets quite hectic sometimes, the live chat. So I'm going to tell you guys, please, um, it's going to be difficult for us to um, basically get to all the questions. So we're going to turn on the super chat right now so you guys can make sure that your questions can be answered and I'll answer as many of them as possible. I I'm not sure that I'll be able to get to every single one of you. I will answer as many as I can, but if you definitely want your questions to be answered, go to the bottom left of the live chat, click that dollar sign and then give us a super chat and we'll be forced to stop the conversations and ask your question out. So without further ado, let me bring on my guests today. So we've got Michal Pretorius, welcome to the show. We've got Marco, we've got Tristan, and we've got Sia on the show today. So we've got an excellent, excellent panel. Uh, you, I, I can't, I don't think that you guys can deny that. So you must smash that like button for the panel that we bring bringing on for you guys today. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Um, how are you guys doing? I'm gonna, I'm very excited to actually talk to all of you. Um, it's been a while since I caught up with Michal and Marku. It's the first time for Sia and the first time for Tristan. So let's just say hello to the newbies first and foremost. How are you guys doing? Sia, um, see you, you, you're the only one representing the... the, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, let's start with Michal. I'm going to start with Michal to, to just get the game go, uh, rolling and the ball going because I know you have somewhere else to be right now. So I just want to get your insight into the CSA T20 Challenge. As a whole for you, uh, what was the tournament like? Um, did you? What sort of experiences did you get out of it? Yes, I was, um, yeah, you know, it, was, it was nice. It was definitely not um, how we expected it a year ago. Um, we know that was what was going to happen. Um, I was lucky to be part of a bubble, so I knew what I was going to be part of. Um, it was nice. It was a good tournament. I think it was a bit tough for us conditions-wise. Um, we're, not, we're not used to used to playing on, on, on slow turning wickets. Um, you know, it's, it's just completely different for us, but it was a good competition. I mean, I think all the teams had, had probably had their best players. And, oh, well, it, at the end of the day, just, I mean, the guys, the guys uh, really stood up and, and, and performed well. Mm -hmm. I, I know you. There's a specific picture that's got doing the rounds at the moment. Is that when you hit that winning runs? I'm not going to say mention the team uh, that it happened against, <laughs> but there was an amazing, amazing celebration that you did. I think I used the picture as well for my um, um, for my um, story as well with a bat this time around, Michal, because you started off very well with the ball, and I can see the improvements in your career so far, but with regards to the bat, you've really turned it on in this particular tournament as well. For some people that may not know that that's a massive attribute to your game, what what drove you this tournament to be able to perform the way you did, especially under pressure? Oh, you know, it's um, it actually, I can't really prepare for it. Um, it, it, it almost just kind of happened. So it was, it was, it was nice to be in that position. I mean, I think it's, it's every cricketer that really wants to to have a stand up performance. I mean, you, 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 you're hopeful for situations like that. And I mean, then, I mean, all your training and stuff just has to take over. Um, you, you need luck on your side as well. I mean, I think I got a bit of luck there. Um, but it was nice. I enjoyed it. I mean, I worked on my bed this, this past year, so. It's just it's it's starting to it's starting to become what I want to be, but it's not quite there yet. Mm. 
the inf- we have to ask you, and I'm, I know I'm asking guys. I know I'm asking Michal all the questions right now, but because I, I just want to get it, get his part out of the way so he can uh, can leave. Um, Michal, with regards to you and Alan Donald, I mean, being with someone like that in a in a as a coach, having someone a, a legend like that of the game, how has he improved your bowling specifically? Because I've seen some accurate bowling from you, especially some lethal bowling from you throughout the season so far. Yeah, uh, no, he's actually, uh, I think, as a mentor, he's, he's, he's probably a, a very strong mentor, and uh, that, that makes it a lot easier the way you think about the game, the, the things you do, um, and, and how you set up situations. Um, Action-wise, he, he didn't change much, um, but I think it's, it's, it's so necessary for any young bowler to, to get that mental, that mental drive from someone, and a guy like him that has played all the, I mean, he's played on the highest level and he's a legend, an absolute legend in, in cricket and, and just to hear how he thinks about stuff and how he sets up a game and how he sets up players. I mean, we, we actually don't talk a lot about uh, batsmen specifically. We, we try and back out or um, the things that we, we tried in the net and, and I think that's a great thing that we've, we've actually learned. Um, so, I mean, but he's, he's unbelievable. I think I think any guy can, can be so happy if he can, be, he can work with a guy like that. And also, we know that you had some time with the Proteus camp. Um, can you give us some insight into that a little bit? Um, what was the feeling? What was the feeling like to to hear that you were announced in that initial squad? Yeah, it was it was quite unexpected. We still had a game to win, so I tried to set the emotions aside a bit. Um, but as, I mean, as, as as any player, I think it's it's a, it's a achievement that you wanna you wanna you wanna reach. Um, I didn't quite turn out how I want it, but it's it's fine. I think it's. Knowing that I, 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 I was there was for me was very nice. Um, it was a good feeling. It's know that that some of the hard work really paid off. Um, and it's just it's a nice feeling. It was a bit different than what I initially thought. The guys a lot more chilled. I mean, you know, you don't spend as many as much time with them. Um, just seeing them normally. So it was it was nice catching up with everyone and just you know just actually learning learning a bit more about their lives and stuff as well. Okay, thanks a lot, Michal, for coming on. I know I'm not going to open up the guys to banter you right now. Um, we'll do that at another time. But thanks a lot for coming on the show and giving your time to us. Sorry, I just I just want to say one thing. I mean, I remember when I got my first playing shirt. It was, it was a great feeling. Um, and I see, see I'll probably sleeping with these as well. So, I mean, I hope you enjoy it. But... <laughs> yeah, see, you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything to Michal before he goes? <laughs> <laughs> I got no words for myself, no. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. Th- thanks a lot, Michal, for coming on the show. We'll see you again very soon. We'll definitely do a catch up again. Cool. See Thank you, man. you very much. Cheers, guys. Bye. See you. Okay, shot. Okay, I'm opening it up, guys. This is the time to chat now. A lot of you guys, first tournaments. So that's what's nice to talk to you, all of you guys here, right here about this. Now we know Marco. Um, Mr. IPL, I say Mr. Mumbai, uh, <laughs> getting his contract. Let's just get that out of the way, Marco. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, first and foremost, where were you when you heard the news? And I mean, your brother, your parents, all of them, your friends must be so happy for you for what the, what has happened. Um, obviously, picking up that contract. Yeah, I, uh, we were in Durban now with the T20 stuff, obviously, yeah. when the auction happened. But um, it's a funny story because I was busy sleeping when the whole situation took part. And um, yeah, I basically got like, I got a bunch of calls and my dad basically called me awake and then with the news. <laughs> so as soon as I heard the, uh, my dad called me and I woke up to call, answered him. As I was speaking to my dad, I just heard like Naube, especially Naube. And all the other warrior warriors players just in the wall. Hey, Blanca, Blanca, <laughs> and then yes. So yeah, um, obviously yeah, it's great news, and I'm very excited. And yeah, I, like I can't even, I can't believe actually it happened. But yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, I saw it. I'm sure all of you guys saw it. The media attention that you would have gotten, and the pressure you would have had to play under after hearing that. I mean, I think someone similarly also, Chris Morris going as the highest player in the in the IPL ever, had to play with a similar pressure as well because playing with that price tag is difficult. Um, did Robbie and maybe some of the guys in your team maybe give you some insight into how to stay focused regardless of that? 
Yeah, I remember just Gian coming coming to me saying literally, um, you've got it now. So it's like he, like I've put pressure on myself, like seeing it like you're saying. Um, I got a, I got the IPL contract now. There's all this expectation, but Gian basically just came to me and said, "You've got it now." So there's you're already going. So there's no pressure. So just go out and express yourself. You can't. You you, don't, you basically don't have anything to lose. Um, but yeah, everyone just told me just to stay calm in pressure moments and just give your best, basically. Yeah, that's excellent. Because Tristan, I mean you. I mean, I, sp- I don't know if you remember, and I tell everybody this, he probably won't remember, but I interviewed you in 2018 at Kamojola Week when you won that, when you were the highest scorer in the run scorer in the, in the competition. I mean, obviously, you've matured so much since then. Um, this man above you over here, I mean, he's someone that you'll know very well. To see a youngster like him as well, similar age you two of you, um, to see a guy like him get picked up and his career go the way it has, um, what sort of inspiration does that do for you? And what does it do for you as a player um it's, it's awesome to see actually like you play with him face him in the nets and then he's playing in the IPL. but it actually just shows how quickly you can go from like semi-pro or semi-pro cricket to now he's in the IPL. um so it's awesome it's exciting to see for young so you can cricket with yeah so at least you can like when you're facing him in the nets you can say you know i'm, I'm facing a you know, Mumbai guy, yeah. but defending oh, champions. He actually, he actually punished me in the nets, if I may say so. Just to, but yeah. I see you were punishing quite a few people um, uh, in, this, in the last two, especially those two games that I'm talking about. We will get to that a little later because you spoke about semi-pro and obviously how your career can go quickly from semi-pro to professional. See how your career I mean, wow. I mean, obviously playing for Mpumalanga throughout the age groups, but then now coming and getting your opportunity for the Cobras. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. I never saw you play before that warm-up games that I that we had a chance to see. And I was like, who's this guy? Because he's actually spinning the ball. I mean, in South Africa, it's one of those things where our spinners are, are, are learning the trade. I feel we're still new in learning the trade of actually spinning the ball completely. Give me some insight into into you. What makes you make you so special? Because in this particular tournament, okay, yes, we saw you in the one day cup as well. But this particular tournament, you were just on fire before you got injured. Yeah. Um. Well, generally, white ball cricket is is, is very fun. Um. Yeah. The, the trade of spinning a ball, you just have to spin it. Like, um, most of it comes from confidence. Um, because generally, guys just think I have to light, land it in the right area instead of actually focusing on actually turning the ball. Um, but yeah, I've watched a lot of videos of um, Jadeja, of Ashwin, uh, even Sue Bryan from the from the Dolphins as well. Watching him, um, how he bowls, how he grips a ball, all those smaller details actually does count. And having energy through the crease, I see a lot of of spinners these days just having like a lazy run up and and no energy in the crease. So generally, the balls won't turn. But I I, I did a lot of research playing and Bumalanga uh, all my life. And I always wanted to know how I can make myself better than the next guy that's that's in line, you know? So yeah, I, I think that's 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 what's worked worked for me. Um, and yeah. <laughs> okay, I wanna know a little bit more about you now. It's an opportunity for me to get to know you a little bit better because um, I think all of these guys would like to know your story. Um, how did cricket become a thing for you? And, and what were some of the struggles that you faced before you actually got this? Because getting your franchise debut a little later than, than some, I mean, these guys are, are experiencing it much um, earlier in their careers where um, you had to really work hard to get there. So can you give me some insight into your story and what what made, what were some of the struggles that you had to face? Um, well, generally coming from a, from a smaller province like Pumalanga, um, no one really notices you there. Um, there's a lot of talent in Pumalanga as well as Limpopo. Um, but guys just generally turn a blind eye to every cricketer there. You basi- basically have to leave and and try your trade somewhere else. And most of the guys um, go to, to Northerns, uh, Pretoria. And a lot of guys just fall out in the system there because most of the guys are packed um, from from Pretoria. Uh, if not from Easterns, which will be Benoni's side of Joburg. Um, so yeah, playing from Pumalanga was very tough because uh, we don't, they don't play any 
any official first class or list A games. They do play them, but they're all friendlies. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that was the most difficult part because instead of the standard eleven contracts, there's actually fifteen contracts. So there's a lot of guys that you're basically competing against just to get some game time. Um, but yeah, I just carried on playing, played uh, rural cricket from Pumalanga as well before uh, signing a contract for them for the unofficial <laughs> unofficial games. Um, rural cricket played a rural twice, um, and yeah, that's the second time was actually the, the 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 game changer for me because our manager for SA Rural was um, um, Gavin Leach, so he's part of of Portland Cricket. And one of the guys, um, I don't know if you know him, I think he's Sarami. He decided mm -hmm. to, to stop playing. Um, he's coaching at UWC now. Um, and then he just gave me a call and he actually rushed me and said, please just send me your CV now, your cricket CV. Send me all the videos you can find on, on, on Pitch Vision. Just whatever you can, just send it to me now. And then I think about two days later, um, uh, my agent... Uh, he gave me a call and said they're interested in you at Boland. So, firstly, I took that opportunity just to play some of official cricket um, because that's that's where you generally be noticed and that's where it counts most. Um, and funny story, I haven't even played for Boland yet. <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that's my story. <laughs> that's that's incredible. But who, who was the one to break the like? to break the news to you or like or, or say look you, you got an opportunity now to play for the cobras who was the who was the guy that really like pushed you into that direction uh well our coach at Poland, uh henry williams he mm -hmm. sent i think it was just a week after new year's and he said see uh, you better get yourself back um uh, actual prince wants to just to see what 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 you got to be honest i had a bad first practice because I just came straight from home, um, couldn't catch a ball, couldn't feel the ball. And most of it was because of the pressure, because I'm actually playing against guys I'm seeing on TV all my life. Um, intensity is higher. Um, yeah, so that first that first practice was bad. And then the second one, I just told myself, well, see, you, got, you honestly got nothing to lose. Um, and yeah, <laughs> that's how I got pushed into it. That's excellent. Now we've got a comment over here for Bad Panda. He normally has some wit behind himself when he's when he gives his comments and he says that they say Magala, he, he had a spelling mistake, but he said they say Magala is the best death bowl in essay. Then we saw my <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was just one game. It was just one game. The second game it didn't go. <laughs> that, that that hat trick though, I know um you guys all know. I mean Marco knows I'm obviously a fan as well because that's the main thing over here it's cricket fanatics magazine so we're not scared to say who we support etc and i'm being a cape town boy obviously you want to see the cobras do well i don't worry the warriors also i like to see you guys because you've got a lot of buddies there in the team as well and that doesn't mean that i don't have buddies in the other teams and i do support everybody i have to be unbiased but when you took that hat-trick i already celebrated in this house <laughs> so um just talk me through that hat-trick uh i mean Jeez, to, to be able to perform that in your, like your first ever competition, um, the first T20 competition now in, in, for the Cobras, I mean, what did that feel like? <laughs> um, well, generally, the, the idea was just to minimize as much boundaries because uh, we, weren't, we weren't bowling too well in that game. Um, we played a warm-up game just before the tournament and I actually bowled the last over there and defended eight. So I guess that's where the faith and trust came from from the players, the the coaching staff, captain Tony De Zorzi as well. Um, so I just I just decided, you know what, just go for as 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 little boundaries as you can. Just try ones, twos, if not, get a dot. It didn't start well because Robbie Robbie for, Robbie for I think hit me for a, for a six. It was the short boundary. I'll I'll give it to him. Um, and then after that, after taking the first one of his, I was just like um, just get Kaya Zondo on the other side. And then he decided to go uh, leg side of the ball and just decided to bowl it wide. Lucky, lucky for me, he just nicked it to to short third man. And then as I was about to bowl the third ball, uh, Tony, you're standing on short cover. He tells me, "See, you know you're on a hat trick, right?" I was like, "What? Okay, let me just let me just bowl." And then 
I decided, no, I just toss it up, see what, what uh, Subran is going to do. And then he actually hit it to the furthest part of, that, of, the, of, the, of the ground on that day. And as the commentators would say, safe hands, Nyaku, he hasn't dropped a catch in the tournament. So he, I'm glad he just hit it to him. <laughs> That's excellent. That's an excellent story. And to the guys in the comment section, if you want to get your questions in, you know that I'm going to be talking to the guys for the majority of the time. So hit that um, super chat and get your questions in. I will try to get as many as possible. Okay, that, that was awesome. See, I'm going to get to you a little bit later when we ask you more about the bubble life because that's obviously a massive part of this whole Durban experience and the CSA T20 Challenge experience. But I want to know a little bit more from about Tristan. Now, Tristan, we can start you off by getting a comment over here from one of the guys. And again, Bad Panda with a little bit of banter. He says, ask Tristan if Rabada is still in his pocket. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know how that happened. Just, he was actually, he, he pulled me twice. He rolled slow balls and I couldn't hit. And the seam up ones, I just swung hard. And thankfully, it pulled. Yeah. I mean, the, this must be an incredible performance um, um, experience for you, this T20 challenge, because a lot of these guys you would have looked up to. I mean, even in the Lions side alone, where you were exceptional in that particular match as well. Um, and also, first and foremost, let's take you to the Titans first, because I think, I know in your first game against the Dolphins, you were not out and you didn't get a really opportunity to really take your, to show everybody what you're capable of. But in that sec in the game against the Titans, that, 40, that 44, I think it was, that you scored. I mean, <laughs> I, I was watching it and I was just like, she was. And I was watching Twitter this erupt when you were doing the things that you were doing. I mean, a lot of people spoke about the amount of money that the Titans spent to get a team like they did, like the likes of Chris Morris and the likes of Simon Armour. And, and it's a massive, massive team with a lot of star players, Lungi and Giri, all of these guys, stars. Lizard Williams coming from the Cobras, moving over to the Titans, showing his aggression over there. Um, the spin of Shamsi, I mean, that was another thing. I mean, one of the world-class spinners, we would all say that one of the world best in the T20 format. I mean, how do you go about and approach that when you walk into the middle? Teams in trouble, and you performed the way you did. Yeah, um, I was actually more nervous that game than the Dolphins game. And then what actually helped me is the first ball I faced, um, Shele uh, hit me on my elbow, and it like woke me up a bit and got me going. And then I think the next over I faced, or well, soon early in my innings, I faced in Gidi, and I managed to get two away, and then it. Um, it helped me a bit, but also I was actually very thankful that Bian Liver and Aya Kumani, they played serious knocks to like let me just bat a bit. Um, so credit must also go to them because they played um, serious innings. But it was awesome facing um, Ingidi, Morris, um, Shamsi, all those oaks. It was like being, just facing them was cool. So yeah. The one thing I want to know from you is that the standard man, because like obviously you're playing Kaya Majora week coming through school level, semi-pro cricket, of course, that jump to franchise cricket. And I think um, this is something Mahima can also obviously talk to me about. Sia can also tell me about this a little bit. You can go after Tristan Sia, but from your perspective, the jump, the, the gap between semi-pro obviously and, and playing franchise cricket. I mean, I would, this is the closest thing to the like um, Zanzi Super League level because he has so many protests in this tournament as well, man. So like, uh, I mean, obviously, Marco can speak about the Mzansi Super League and how that was. But um, from your perspective, that jump, that gap, um, what is the difference for you? Did you feel much of a, a, of a difference? No, definitely. Um, even just walking onto the field for warm-up, you see all those proteas on the field as well. And then you've got to go and play against them. Um, that like gets, gets you, wake, wake, wakes you up a bit and gets you going. And then like everything's just... I, what I really enjoyed actually about this level is the balls are harder. Um, you play with the turf balls, um, so it, it travels further. Like, <laughs> but it's it's true. So like, if you middle it, it goes. So that I really enjoyed that, and then also the bowlers are a bit quicker, so it, it comes on nicer. And so that I, that part of the, the level I really enjoyed. I mean, I see, but um, see, are you laughing there in the corner? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like for me as well, um, the jump is 
it's actually not as big as people think it is. Um, it's just a more consistent basis. Um, if you get a team 40 for four, you think you, you clean them up for 80 all out and they end up scoring 140. It just shows the the consistency rather than the skill. Because I, I generally feel semi-pro cricketers also do have the skills, it's just they're not as consistent as franchise players. And yeah, like Tristan said, just walking on the field and seeing these guys, it's it's actually it's actually an honor just to see them. And I, I think as myself personally, I love a challenge. So just seeing them just gets me gets my blood going and Funny enough, I always call a wicket before a game. I'm saying I'll, I'll get that guy out. Um, it worked for for the nights. I got piped out. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's 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 not as it's not as big as people should make it seem. Um, but there is a level to it. Like you you have to be on it every ball. You you can't you can't how can how can I say it? you can't drift <laughs> you can't drift on the field. You have to expect the ball every ball. Bowling wise, you can't miss your straps. If you miss your straps, you get hit for massive sixes like Marco would hit them. Um, but yeah, that's that, 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 that's generally it. Yeah. Yeah, Marco, um, you were on a different level with your bat as well, but with the ball, obviously you always, but you were your batting has improved a lot. Like it, it keeps on increasing. What are you doing um to get that 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 focus to come in? Because you normally come in, in situations where your team will be in trouble. But you come in and then to turn it on immediately, that's a skill on its own. Yeah, um, it's just, yeah, obviously I'm I'm practicing all my, my goal is to try and be a, a proper all-rounder. Um, but yeah, it's just at practice, like people like Vian, uh, Marco Mare, um, John John, those guys, Matthew Breska, they will, I'll literally go and ask them questions on, how do they think of playing certain balls and certain players in certain um, situations and stuff like that? And then I'll just go out and try them. Um, yeah, luckily this T20 comp, it came off, but yeah, it's just hard work. And then um, asking as plenty questions as possible, trying to figure out what to do in certain situations and then actually in the, in the game, actually executing or trying to execute the plan that you have. But yeah, it's just... Yeah, mainly hard work and learning as as quick as possible. That's excellent. Um, see, I you've got a friend in the comment section here, Tyrone Peters. He wants to know from you. Um, for see, is there a big difference between bowling in a T Twenty tournament compared to bowling against the Aussies at the Wanderers last year for a couple of days? <laughs> uh, he was my coach at at JP JP Quantum Cricket Club. Um, and then yeah, he got me involved to bowl to be a net bowler for the Aussies last year. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually not uh, bowling to the Aussies was was much more different because if the ball gets hit there, it stays hit. Like at at some point we we bowled in the middle at at Wonders, and the amount of times I was cleared out of out of the stands was 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 I can't even I don't even have a word for it. <laughs> but um. Yeah, bowling in this comp was actually different because um, practicing and and just bowling and comparing it to match time is is a whole lot different because on on match day you know you have to be on it. Um, bowling to the Aussies was a fun experience, but bowling in match day in this T Twenty comp was a little bit more mentally tough compared to bowling to the Aussies. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna open up. The conversations about the bubble. I want to know what it was like there in Durban. Obviously, you're all stuck in Durban. I mean, a bio bubble, of course. But before we get there, Bashir Walters wants to say that Tristan is rocking the side path. <laughs> and he wants to say Marco was born on a long weekend. Okay, so let's get into the to the banter of this conversation. Uh, did you guys get? To, I'm going to open up your mics now. Um, did you guys get an opportunity to mingle with some guys from the other teams? Oh, anybody can go. First, yeah. Just put up your generally, yeah. It was it was it was a bit easier to to mingle. Um they did tell us it's it's it's, it's we just have to stay in the rooms the whole tournament, but it got a little bit easier and knowing that everybody around um every team was tested negative it just made it easier. Uh so yeah, we did I generally myself and a few of the Cobras guys did have 
a few mingles here with um, the Knights guys, Warriors guys, Titans guys as well. At basically every team, yes, at different nights, uh, playing cards, FIFA nights, <laughs> yeah. Who is who won the FIFA tournament? You must have been a FIFA tournament going around. Uh not not in our camp. <laughs> we did have a few, uh, but yeah, no no tournament. Okay, cool. Um, Tristan and Marco, from your perspective, did you get to mingle with anybody? Get to ask any questions to some senior guys from other teams that you always wanted to ask questions to? We start with Tristan and then go to Marco. Um, yeah, I actually I spent a lot of time with like Clinton and Gian Pluti and Keegan Peterson came to um, chill with, or come with us a bit and just to hear him talk about Creek Pit was really cool and all those guys actually Anna as well um, just to like see hear their experiences and learn from them was like awesome even just to chill and chat about anything with them was also pretty cool yeah because I mean there's a question of a oops the wrong one there's a question of a year saying how is it to have a guy like Anik Nokia in the dressing room must be surreal and I know Anna's a great guy but I want to know more about his serious side um, because he's a very soft-spoken, quiet guy who do when he talks to me. But I want to know about his more serious side when he guys get serious and when he talks cricket. What and when you're facing him in the nets, of course, must be surreal. Yeah, I actually just like I don't know where he was bowling before the Sri Lanka series, like, and we were hitting balls in the nets, and he asked if we could bowl to us, and then that's when I faced him for the first time. And I was like a bit just hanging back and seeing, so I was a bit nervous. Um, but he's actually, uh, you must probably ask Marku, but um, in the bowlers meetings, I think he was very serious, but around the rest of us, he was, he's a pretty chilled guy. Um, yeah, very chilled. But I think in the bowlers meeting, he, he got, can be a bit more serious. Marku, you can take it. Yeah. Um, okay. St starting with the bubble. Um, I think the first two or three days we was the only time basically when everyone stayed in their rooms. After that, everyone basically went to other people's rooms. Like Vian stayed right across from my room, so we would go into each other's rooms, chat cricket, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like we didn't. I played Call of Duty with most of the guys, <laughs> like Vian and Andre and other and Marco Mare. Um, we would have like. Yeah, nights where we play Call of Duty, and then yeah, Andrif he's he's a very nice guy, and then in the bullies meeting he is, I wouldn't say he's like dead serious, but he when it comes a time where like business is business, and then playtime is playtime, if you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so like in the bullies meeting he'll say what he thinks, what the plans are, and then after that it's chilled vibes, and he's old, then he's like the normal. Um, friendly, Andre. Awesome. So I'm going to give this question to everybody. So we're going to answer it one by one. Let's just go from the top of the screen. We can start with Marco. We go to Tristan and then we can go to see how to end it off. The question is, what was the main thing that you guys learned from this experience and where do you want to take your cricket careers from here? Um, for me, bowling wise, it's basically assessing the conditions as quick as possible and then adapting and making a plan from there on and i could say i could basically say the same with my batting and then uh where do you want to take it, your cricket from here um yeah just from here just try and stay as consistent as possible and obviously just give my best every time i go out there because it's a privilege to to actually to play cricket for a living or for, for every day and yeah we we actually blessed for, to in to be in the position as well. Yeah, and um, we've got someone saying we're excited to see you in the blue and gold. So thanks, for, thanks a lot, Marco, from for your comments over there. Um, we go to Tristan over here yeah, now. The same question. Um, I think the main thing I learned from this experience was pretty much just that, not that I like could cope, but that I actually like didn't feel comfortable, but um, I got sort of performances out there um, so that like I was you always wonder are you can you make the next step and then I wouldn't say I've made the next step but that I can contribute to my team um, in the next level so that's what I like feel like so it gives you a bit of self-confidence and then to take my cricket um, I just want to try and improve all the time try and stay 
um, or get better all the time. And then, yeah, you know, we've got the semi-pro thing, so try and do well there now in our next bubble, and just just keep enjoying cricket. And um, I think that's very important. Excellent, excellent. So, Sia, from your point of view, um, wise, I think just being able to compete with 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 the the, the big dogs, um, yeah, um, that's that's generally the best learning experience I got. Uh, where do I want to take cricket from here? I just I just want to play competitive cricket most of the time. Um, probably from now until I retire. Uh, Lord knows when that's going to be. Um, so yeah, that's 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 generally it. Um, and yeah, most most of the other things that I learned is that you can't really bank on your skill. There has to be a lot of knowledge coming into the game as well. So as you saw with the dolphins and the and the lions, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of experience there in the team. So when they were in trouble, there's the experienced guys know exactly what to do. Whereas other teams basically struggled when when the, when they were not hitting their straps. Um, so yeah, it's just to learn uh, learn a lot more about the game, about situations, like Marco said as well. Um, learning to adapt quickly, because uh, people think we we played on the same type of wicket in Durban. Some days it was flat. Some days it was it was playing like you playing in India. Um, some days were it was just hard and dry. Um, so yeah, just learning how to adapt and how to do your skill to the best of your ability as quick as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So with a a definition like that and a whole definition like that and explanation like that, then I think Pat Panda's comment is true. Ashwin can learn a few things from Shia. <laughs> No, no. We've got him because <laughs> he can do a lot of funny skills. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's insane. I mean, to watch him play is insane to watch him play. Um, question for everyone. There's one one last question for everybody. I think let's to start with um, Sia. We've got it from Emily. Question for everyone: Who's the funniest guy in the team for you guys? Ooh, it has to be. It. I think Imran. Imran Manak. He, he, he he's a dry humor. He's, he's, he's just generally. You you don't you don't want to have a conversation with him because he's either having good banter's against you, um, but once he's done with you, then you know he can chill with him because he's gonna move on to other guys. <laughs> That's excellent, Tristan. From your perspective, I know so it's you haven't been long enough in the the team to really give a whole na- list of names, but from your small experiences so far, um, Gian Clitty, he makes me laugh. He is so funny. The stuff he says, the stories he tells, or oh, he's he's hilarious. I love that guy. <laughs> he's too. <laughs> Wait, I have to ask you, what is one of the funniest things that he's told you? Maybe keep it within a realm that you are allowed uh, to say. <laughs> PG, PG, but he's too funny. <laughs> but yeah, that, uh, he makes me laugh. He's a proper, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's awesome, Marco. For you, besides Gian, no, uh, yeah. Besides Gian, for me it's Bash, but Bash wasn't there. But yeah, Gian is definitely, definitely one of the funniest guys in the team. I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome, guys. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, and thanks a lot to all the viewers out there that have come on the show as well. Um, don't forget to obviously smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe, and click the notification bells and all that for all future videos. Don't forget to download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. It's all free. You can subscribe right now for free, and you get all the back issues as well. The link is on the screen and in the description. Go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all updates as well. We will give you guys amazing content there too, up to date every single day. Ask Marco, he knows. Um, you can go to uh, become a patron today as well. The patrons open at now for you guys to support us and join our community. Um, this is an opportunity for you guys to also be direct in contact with me in the Discord server. So you can go to the um, to the patron, help us keep this together and join the community and the family of Geek Fanatics magazine. If you guys have a small business, you're looking to make sales online, even if your business is offline, we have an amazing opportunity for you. You can go to the link in the description and we'll help you do so. Or you can just get in contact with us on clickyfanaticsmag at gmail.com. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, Tristan, for coming on the show. Thanks to all the viewers. And we'll see you again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care, everyone. Thank you.